I wanted to see if this is an issue that they've actually dealt with on a professional level. So I got in touch with Ustad Muhammad Timbhambu Hafidhullah Ta'ala, who is an expert in the field of Ruqya and exorcism uh, pertaining to the Islamic sciences and how Islam deals with it, because that's really the only way to deal with it. Um, in fact, it is the only way to deal with it. Anything else is leading to kufr or shirk. Uh, and he was trained by one of the best, if not the best, um, you know, uh, Sheikh who is trained in the in the science of Ruqya and dealing with magic, and that's Sheikh Adil Al Muqbil, uh, Hafidhu Allah uh, Taala. So, 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 this so he's is bringing authority figures into this game. He's a qualified person that I was asking, and I and I basically sent him the sisters question i said is this something that you know you've actually experienced people dealing be, you know having to do with is this a, have you dealt with cases like this because i didn't want it to be a thing where people were actually just having a, kind of an imagination where you you know i, I i've been in situations where people come to me and said brother i need to i need a and i've got this i've got that i've got this i've got that but really a lot of the times it's just them being paranoid even though a lot of the time it's not but that could be the case so i wanted to double check is this something that happens that he mentioned this is something that uh, does happen in the sense. And how do you tell the difference between imagination and a real jinn? There's no way you could identify. There's no way you guys could have any methods to identify between. It's almost as if they're all the same. It's where we've got numerous reports, reports from people saying. Numerous reports of people say, oh, that, that clears it then. That's where that's your evidence. Okay. That they've experienced this and these reports seem to be authentic. yeah personal experiences but yeah that's the most that's just pure evidence right there not only that he said that which we know about the jinn mm -hmm. um it is very is very consistent with what we know about the jinn that they could be doing something like this it, it, oh it's not consistent at all the experiences of people that have with ghosts and demons and spirits if you look at the reports of what they have seen it really depends on where they are if they're in europe it looks more like the demons that they have okay before the internet and media like mix everything together if you went to people in you know the spirits that came to the native americans looked exactly what was described in their stories and culture and then you went to western europe and asked them to the spirits that they came to it, it looked exactly like the devils with the horn and everything that their stories were about and then when you went to them Arabs and talked about the things that they saw as evil spirits and stuff. It looked completely different and very much similar to the stories that they're used to. So they didn't look like each other at all. It looked like a reflection of the stories that they grew up with. But now with the internet and the movies and everybody, now everyone's imagery of evil spirits is just getting copied from each other faster than it used to before. I mean, it used to be copied like before as well, but not so now all of a sudden. Arabs are saying spirits with horns on them, even though on their head, even though that was like a Christian thing, like a pig, like Christians understanding of what is pagan and anti-Christian. And now like, it, especially because American culture dominated the world. So the understanding of ghosts and spirits and demons all of a sudden started looking more and more like what Christians um what dante and other people with christian backgrounds consider to be demonic the, the imagery of what they consider to be demonic and what the imagery of what they consider to be demonic is copied from um what used to be holy in religions before christianity around the roman empire so they got like the fork from some of the gods and the horns from some other gods and the hooves from other divine figure so everything things that used to be holy or like cats became demonic because that's like I don't know, egyptian stuff anything that was used to be holy or divine all of a sudden became witchcraft and satanic right and that was the christian you know so basically christians just grouped everything not christian into pagan or satanic or witchcraft right um, so it was not like these all other religions and Christianity being one of them. It was Christianity and everything else anti-Christian, right? But that was the understanding of Christians of what's anti-Christian or satanic. Um, and now Muslims and a whole bunch of other people, because of the dominance of American culture around the globe, are being influenced by that imagery. Like, you know, Dante and everybody else, right? It, it makes sense like this is not something that goes beyond the scope of that which we understand and have understood about the jinn from the textual evidences 
um, little finger oh little finger saying the spirits have different species asian spirits which are good at math american spirits which are overweight <laughs> hey no cut it out um so then he sent me an article inshallah ta'ala which i'm going to mention some of the points uh, that he mentions on how a person can deal with such a problem and prevent number one prevent it from occurring so those of you who are safe from this alhamdulillah you should be doing this anyway if not all the things at least a lot of the things on the article because it a lot of it is just daily practice that a muslim should be engaging in anyway some of it is specific stuff for the problem uh, but don't, those of you who are experiencing you know sleep paralysis or you know sexual activity and night or assault or guys attacks, imagine imagine you're yeah, having sleep a pluralist uh, and you're getting your advice from this guy like please please tell me that imagine getting your advice from somebody with no experience uh, and he, whoever he sees as, as authority has no experience in mental health and they like they're looking at ancient scripture um, they're looking at the gold uh, gold herders guide to the galaxy uh, written by people that had no understanding of how the mind works or how anything works into fixing modern problems like p problems that we have way better solutions to like again the cost of religion is not just like suicide boom boom can i say that instead of what youtube doesn't like or like war and what was it terry terry attacks again i can't say the word because youtube um these are not the main cause of religion the opportunity costs bad advice like this um people getting you know information to navigate their lives based on an, an understanding of reality that doesn't match objective reality is like the all the costs associated with these little things together adds up to a lot more misery than what you see on the news right um exactly that is one of the core reasons why superstition and religion is harmful yeah exactly again that's something that doesn't get enough attention a lot of people think like cause of religion oh islam boom boom oh mm, mm, you know christianity or priests doing things to children i mean those gets headline covered on headline news like and stuff like that but the added aggregate cost of religion as a whole um is these small little things which actually is not small when it comes to individuals lives added together it adds up to a lot a lot more and people don't understand how significant the opportunity cost here is